So I'm actually going to start that over. Sorry, guys. Okay, do this one more time just so everyone will be able to see it. We're going to do problem 5.48 and applied circuit analysis. It says rework problem 5.37 using P spice. So we're going to go to ORCAD capture CIS demo, which is also under all programs, start menu, cadence, ORCAD, ORCAD capture CIS demo. When you click it, it should ask for admin access. If it doesn't, then you need to right click on the file and say run as administrator. First thing you're going to have to do is say new project. We're going to call this problem 5.48. I wouldn't actually put a point, I would just put a P. I wouldn't put any spaces because sometimes that causes problems. Analog or mixed signal, your location, make sure it's the right location. If this is the first time you're running it, it's probably not going to be the right location, so you can click the browse button and browse and find uh, the folder. In this case, we're going to say OK. I'm going to, you can do a blank project, but I prefer that you actually do analog ground symbol because it'll make your life a whole lot simpler if you use the analog ground symbol. It's going to ask you, it's going to tell you this is the demo version four times. It's going to bring up a browsing window to the left. Click the plus sign. Click the plus sign for the schematic. Double click the page. And that'll bring up your schematic. We can click the text and delete it. We can click, we can highlight uh, this ground. It really, this is a test point or something. We don't really need it, so we're going to delete it. The main thing we need is that ground symbol. We need to make sure we have that. Okay. One way you can know if your program is working or not, if you if we have admin access, is if these um, probe icons are are green, if they have color to them. If they're grayed out, that means you you don't have admin access to the to the computer. Now, so what we want to do is we want to draw the picture in the book. So what did you do wrong if you didn't get those green out? Um, you have to right click. You have to right click on this and say run as administrator. I did do that and I've got this form. Put in the username and password, and if you, if you didn't put in the right one, then that means you don't have admin access. Student123 is the yeah, password. What about the username? Huh? What's the username? Uh, workforce Tech, uh, WFT211. WFT211. Okay. That's what it is right there. Okay. So, I need a resistor. I, on my schematic, I have three resistors and I have a current source. So, I'm going to go grab a resistor. In order to do that, I hit the very right of the screen, place part, the little part with a little plus symbol on it. I'm going to type R and that resistor pops up. Hit the plus sign again in order to get it to show up on your cursor. So I hit I click left click that. Now it shows up on my cursor. I'm going to plop down three resistors. One, two, three. Hit escape. Okay. Now I'm going to go try to find a current source. So I'm going to type I and I see the first one that pops up is I source. It looks like a sinusoidal one sinusoidal. We want to get just a DC, so if we go IDC, that's the correct one. So we hit, we left, in order to, for it to show up on your cursor, you have to click the part, place part button. Um, now our current source is actually pointing up, so and the default is pointing down, so I'm going to hit Control R to rotate it. So Control R twice. We'll rotate it where the arrow is pointing up. 
now I'm going to zoom in a little bit uh, not that much okay now I'm going to hit escape to get back to my pointer now how am I going to wire it up well you can't hover over it like you can in multi-sim you actually have to click the place wire or hit W notice notice if I hover over this wire it says place wire W in parentheses well that's trying to tell you that you can hit the keypad W as a substitute for that so it's a quick key notice that if you hover over place part it says P so you can hit P on the keypad to place a part or W to, to do the wire so that's an easier way to do it so I'm gonna actually hit W on my keypad and notice my cursor changed when I hit that I'm gonna left click once actually I want to make it look exactly like these the picture in the book so I'm gonna make it a little bit different so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna wire that first I'm gonna wire this Now I'm going to wire this one. Wire this one. Now I'm going to connect to the source. Connect here. This is the return path. So this is what we have in the book. Now the one in the book has no ground symbol. In PSPICE you always have to have a ground symbol. So it's not really going to affect the final result or the answer, but we're going to we're going to make this ground. You can put the ground symbol anywhere; it doesn't really matter. In this case, because there's no ground symbol on the schematic. All right, now the question is: What is the current through each of the branches, or through each of the resistors? Now I currently do not have the right resistor value so I'm actually going to double click on the resistor value not on the resistor itself. If I double click on the resistor itself I get a very complicated bar which you can type in the resistor value but you have to scroll over all the way to the right to find the value and that would be a 10k. So I can put an extra zero there hit enter and then I can close that and notice it says 10k. The simplest way to do it instead of clicking on the resistor would be to click on the actual value. In this case I want an 8K resistor so I'm going to double click on the value and change it to 8. I'm going to do the same for R3. I want it to be a 4K resistor. Hit OK. I'm done so I'm going to hit save. Now I want to first create a simulation profile and then I want to hit this run button. So I want to click this first and then I want to click this. Okay. So I start a simulation profile, doesn't matter what you call it, you can call it um, DC underscore bias, you can call it whatever you want, you can call it test or sim doesn't really matter uh, create now the, the strange thing about this whole process is once you do that you're waiting for something to happen and nothing looks like it's happening but if you look down at the bottom of the screen this thing was flashing a while ago and for some reason it puts this window in the background so we want to click this this came up because we had clicked this. Now what we want is really we just want a bias point. We're not doing a time domain right now. We're not doing DC sweep, AC. We're only just we just want to know what the current the DC current is. Bias point means your DC currents, your steady state currents. We'll do more advanced things as we move on later in the course. So we hit OK. Now you've set up a simulation profile. Now the only thing left is to hit run.
Now you see that the values got annotated to the screens. You have zero volts and zero volts. Why do we have zero volts? Well, I actually forgot to put anything in the current source. <laughs> That's why I have zero volts. So what do I need? I need a five amp current. Okay, so I'm gonna have to double click this and change it to five. I'm gonna hit save. I'm gonna rerun the simulation. Now I should have a voltage there. Okay, it's in kilovolts because I have um, a very I have a very large current and I have very large resistors, so it's going to be a very high voltage. Now, in order for me to look at the currents in the branches, I have to click the current button, enable current display. So if I do that, it immediately shows me what my currents are. I can move those around if I want to get them out of the way. Just left click on them and move them wherever you want. If you move them far away, they kind of have a little thing on it that attaches to them to show you where it's coming from. And that's it. That is problem 5. Point, oh, we can also add text. So that's problem 5.37. So let's see if we can place some text here. Let's do place text. And I'm going to say problem 5.37. And you can put your name. So when you print out things, and then now we can print it. Just say file, print. Uh, you can print it to file if you want. Print colors in black. Uh, let's see. Actually, I'm not connect. I don't think I'm connected to this printer here. Am I? Yeah, because I'm actually on the faculty network. I can't connect to that printer because I'm on the faculty network. But since you guys are on the student network, you can connect to that printer. Good. Any questions with this one? Who's able to get it to work? Everyone's able to get it to work now? So what was the issue? <laughs> I didn't have an issue with PC. Yeah, he didn't change a single thing over here. I didn't have an issue with 